This is TK Coleman, and you are tuning in to another episode of TK's Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk about facts over narratives and truth over teams. Let's dive right in with tweet number one. Narratives are powerful. A well-crafted narrative will have you despising people you never met, hating books you never read, rejecting ideas you never analyzed, and loving things that never earned your loyalty. We're more led by stories about facts than by facts themselves. There's a commonly uh, occurring phenomenon on social media where someone will post an article and people will immediately begin refuting the article based on the headline. And when the person responds to them, they say, hey, the article never even made that claim. Read the article first. But people refute the article without having even read it. Or someone finds out you're a capitalist or whatever label you might use to identify anything that you practice or believe. And they immediately start responding to arguments that you never made. They haven't even asked you to articulate your position and they're already responding to what they think is wrong with your position. Why? Because they're reacting to something that they have in their imagination that they are associating with people like you, people who believe things that you believe. This is the world that we live in. We respond more to narratives than to actual facts, than we respond to the arguments themselves. By the times we by the time we meet a person, we already have narratives we've been conditioned to believe about people who look like that, people who live in that kind of place people who believe that sort of thing. And so an important part of being a critical thinker is not only listening to as many different sources as you possibly can, but developing your ability to uncouple the actual claims that are being made by sources and the narratives that provide context for those claims and cause you to see them in a specific way. Narratives are designed to invoke emotion. Arguments appeal to logic. There's nothing wrong with emotion, but you never want to allow your feelings to be the basis for your ability to determine what the facts are. Feelings are important, but feelings are not the same as facts. Always make sure you are prioritizing the arguments themselves over the narratives because sometimes ugly truths are obscured by beautiful narratives designed to direct you away from them. And sometimes beautiful truths are overshadowed by ugly narratives designed to keep you from questioning things, designed to keep you from experiencing the freedom that can come into your life when you start to focus on the truth. One of the most important things you can do. And that's all I got to say about that one. Let's go to tweet number two. Before you check to see if liberals are preaching it or if conservatives are preaching it, check to see if it's true. And if it's true, hold on to it. Never lose sight of a good idea merely because the people over there agree or disagree. Be loyal to truth, not teams. One of the ways that group identity and partisan thinking and an obsession with politics can hinder our ability to think critically is we allow certain groups to create narratives that cause us to associate certain positions or claims with them. And once that happens, it creates an environment where people never want to embrace the goodness that can be found in some area of life because, well, I don't want to be misunderstood and seen as a liberal or as a conservative. You see this happen in the arts quite a bit, right? Like creativity and art is associated with being liberal. It's associated with being progressive. And so a person might have a hard time embracing some beautiful aspect of creativity or some beautiful statement about creativity because they don't want to be associated with that. And when you begin to think like that, you are only robbing yourself. I spent a lot of time posting different quotes on social media from different philosophers of freedom and different entrepreneurs and different thinkers and so on. And one of the things that never ceases to amuse me is the difficulty with which people 
engage quotes and ideas based on who it comes from. You can take something that is relatively obvious or inspiring, and if it comes from someone that's from the wrong political party, or if it comes from someone that they don't like, it's almost like they just don't have the ability to learn at all. Don't be that person. Be so self-interested. Be so passionate about your own growth. Be so passionate about your own freedom that you are willing to learn from anyone and you are willing to follow the truth wherever it leads, even if people that you despise are also following that particular truth. It's not about teams. It's about truth. And as long as you follow the truth wherever it leads, you'll end up in the right place, whether it's with your preferred team or not with your preferred team. Teams are secondary. Do whatever you have to do to get the information that's going to help you make your life better and that's going to help you contribute to the creation of a freer society and leave all that team stuff behind. It's just another form of group identity, a socially acceptable form of group identity that has deceived so many into adopting an approach to life that has led to nothing more than some form of slavery. You deserve better than that. You have the right to pursue something better than that. That's TK's Two Cents on Facts Over Narratives and Truth Over Teams. If you're listening on the podcast, be sure to subscribe, leave a comment. You're watching on YouTube, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Be sure to leave a comment telling me your additional thoughts or letting me know anything you'd like to hear me discuss in the future. And please share this with a family member or friend that you think might benefit from listening to these riffs. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Peace.